So I'm going to go talk about what are the energy losses in a ecosystem. So as you go along the food chain, so you've got the bottom, which is the producers. These are actual photosynthesize. Um, they produce everything. And as you go up levels, okay, you notice that there is a lo uh, loss of energy because it's kind of like a, a, the biomass, the biological mass. It's kind of like a pyramid. It, it goes like a pyramid. I'm not talking about population, right? Population is something different. But the biological mass, the total mass, the total biological mass keeps dropping as you go up the food chain. What does that mean? That means there's some type of energy loss. So when I talk about biomass, I'm talking about the, um, the mass of the living material, not the dead material, not the bones. That is what is going to be lost as you go up, right? Dead animals, dead bones, blah, blah, blah. So when we're talking about biomass, we're talking about um, the total biological mass. It is a pyramid. You've got a loss. So when we look at primary consumers, the primary consumers that eat the vegetables, they do not eat all the vegetables. They do not eat the roots. They do not eat the uh, bark, the, um, the outer layer. So they're leaving behind some of that plant mass. So not all of the producers, not all of the plants are going to be passed on to the primary consumers, the herbivores, the ones that eat the actual vegetation. Now, if you remember, okay, plants have a specific place called the cell wall, which is a polysaccharide. So basically, it is a glucose, um, is glucose joined up together, just like starch, it's a polysaccharide. Um, and, you know, just like us human beings, rabbits cannot break down every part of the actual plant they eat. The cellulose, the cell wall, is going to be passed along as fiber. So they're going to poop out some of this um, material, some of the undigestible plants, uh, plant matter, which is going to be the cellulose part. Now, as the animals are breaking down the food that they eat into smaller pieces, not all of these smaller pieces are used for growth and repair. Anything that is not used, it is then pooped out. So you then get some excrement. Now, we know what respiration is. Respiration is breaking down the food and turning it into energy. Now, some of that respiration, if you remember the respiration formula, some of that some of the byproduct, the waste products you get at the end, isn't just energy, but also carbon dioxide and water vapor. So some of the food that you eat is lost via respiration, is lost as carbon dioxide, is lost as water vapor that you breathe out. So when they say they breathe out, they also breathe out water vapor, but carbon dioxide also. Now, the efficiency as you go up, so it's around about 10%, 10 to 20%, rarely goes above this. That is why some vegetarians and vegans are saying that if we eat plants directly instead of eating the animals, we will have more energy. Because remember, the plants feed the animals, then that we eat the animals. So if we take away the actual animals, we would save about about ninety percent of energy. Okay, now it's debatable. You could say like the animals are eating grass. We don't want to eat grass, but we could use that grass to plant crops. I don't want to get into too much detail about this, but it, there is a truth behind this. Now, some of the waste products are um, urea. Some of the waste products are given off as heat to warm up the animals. This is why animals are usually uh, put into tight spaces to save their energy that is wasted as heat. And when you even eat an animal, you're not eating all the parts. So some of their parts are going to be bones, teeth, and things like that. 